Happy Friday the 13th, everybody. It's Friday the 13th, 2021, and you wanna know what's scary? I'm gonna tell you. Debt to income ratios. Yep, debt to income ratios are one of the most important things that you need to be watching out for when you're looking to buy a house. Debt to income means we're taking all of your debts as shown in your credit report, adding that to your proposed monthly mortgage payment, and then dividing it by your gross monthly income. If that number is above 45%, typically 45%, you're not gonna be able to get a loan. I've seen this blow up deals after deals after deals. Guys, if you're looking to purchase a home in 2021, 2022, whenever you're looking to purchase a home, make sure you keep your debts low. So that means don't go out buying cars with 500, 600, $700 payments. Don't go and buy TVs and Xboxes and Playstations, racking up your credit card debt, increasing that monthly payment. Don't go, unfortunately, I, I wanna say don't go because I just think school is just inflated and it's way too expensive. So try not to go hundreds and thousands of dollars in debt, in school loan debt, because we have to take a percentage of that and add that to your debt to income ratio even if you're on a deferred plan, we still have to take 1% or half a percent of that entire balance and hit you for that payment. Also, be wary of co-signing for your friends or family. If your friends or family members want to buy a car and they don't necessarily, are, they don't, they're not approved on their own and they say, hey, let me get approved with you because you have enough income, you have good credit, if you sign and co-sign for me, then I can get approved, then I'll be golden. Thanks for all the help, brother, sister, whatever, mom, dad. Just so you know, if you co-sign on somebody's other debt, we as a lender, when you go buy a house, are gonna have to take that entire payment that they're paying for and hit you with it on your debt to income ratio. Unless they have paid 12 months of payments and you can actually prove that with documentation then we can eliminate it but why go through that trouble just make sure you pay your bills on time don't let things go to collections make sure that you are aware of how much you're spending each and every month and how much you're actually bringing in every single month this is so important guys when you're buying a house I speak with people every single day and I have to tell them the bad news hey you don't qualify today based on your debt to income ratio being too high. We, we have ways to get around it. You know, we can add a co-borrow or a co-signer if you want to live with someone, but most people don't want to live with somebody. Also, if you have a mom or dad who's willing to co-sign, that's great, but we also have to take in consideration all of their debts and calculate your debt to income ratio with, you know, your proposed monthly mortgage payment. So I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're looking to buy a house and you need a mortgage, you need to keep your debt to income ratio below 45%. So do yourself a favor and just calculate all of your debts, or your debt payments, I should say. So credit cards, car payments, student loans, um, anything that would show up on your credit report as a payment, add all those up and then add how much you can afford in terms of your monthly mortgage payment, add that up. That's gonna give you a number and then you wanna divide that by your monthly gross income. As long as it's below 45%, you should be good, and we can move forward with a mortgage for you. Um, obviously, you're gonna to have to have your down payment, so down payment's gonna be 3%, 3.5%, 5%, 10, 15, 20%, really just depends on what you have available. Um, if you don't have any money available, there are down payment assistance programs that you can take advantage of, which are you know, great programs, um, but they're gonna give you a little bit higher payment, so just be aware of that. Um, once you have that down payment number in mind, you know how much you need to save, just keep in mind you're gonna need at least, you know, anywhere from five to $12,000 of closing costs, and that's your closing costs and your prepaid taxes and insurance that you're gonna have to pay uh, at closing. So keep that in mind, it's not just the down payment, you also have your closing costs and prepaids that you need to be, you know, uh, you need to have available funds for. So. That's the scary news on 4th, not 4th of July, Friday the 13th. So if you have any questions about getting a mortgage or you're just curious about something having in the process of getting a mortgage, put them in the comments down below. If you learned something new today, 
give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe if you want to hear some more info from me, Wes Saeed. Just kidding, Saeed Hamoud. Just kidding, Home Alone with Saeed, I'm out. All right, no more, I'm done. I'm making a fool of myself. Okay, I'm shutting this off, I'm done.